Hello, I'm pleased to be joined today by Marcello Di Stefano, who is the Managing Director of the San Carlo Group of Restaurants. Um, Marcello, welcome. Um, Hi, Robert. A, a Manchester institution, but not only Manchester, all around the country and, and other countries in the world. Five city centre venues in Manchester, as well as the Manchester Airport Marriott uh, location. Obviously, many challenges since the government ordered shutdown in March. What's been your experience in the intervening period? Um, it, it's, it's very strange. The, 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 the first experience was kind of more of the shock of everything that happened so quickly. Though saying that, we were already preparing beforehand, um, before the actual official lockdown. Um, we were already shutting down restaurants. So we were quite well, uh, I should say, organized as best as we could be and tried to minimize the amount of cash burn within that sort of week and it was quite difficult because if you remember Boris actually said at the about a week before shutdown he said or, or on the Monday I can't remember five days before said um, please avoid restaurants and bars without actually shutting us down so it was kind of a very nerve-wracking week I'm, I'm sure for a lot of businesses once they announced the furlough on the Friday that was a big relief um, for not just us, but I think for the whole, lots of industries and, and businesses. So the, then the, the, the lockdown period, do you want it from a business perspective or personal perspective? Both. Both. So the initial period, actually the initial period was not great because I actually got coronavirus and I got it pretty badly. So oh, goodness. Um, yeah, it took, it wiped me out for a few weeks. Um, and I think in the beginning, the main thing really was, once the business was locked down, it was actually quite a strange feeling. Um, there was a minimal amount of money uh, going out and nothing coming in. So it was a reasonably safe position. And then after about the first weeks, once I was recovering from being ill, it was then starting the negotiations with landlords. Um, and I think through uh, all of that, um, that's been probably the most difficult aspect of it. And then it went into this weird sort of, I think for a lot of us, this kind of weird bit in the middle. The weather was great. You were kind of sat outside. There's a lot of time for thinking. Though my household was quite intense having four very young children. Um, and, and actually, from a personal perspective, I actually really connected with the family for a while, which I hadn't really um, done for ages because I've been working so much and, uh, you know, spending some, a, a lot of time with a young family. It was, it was good. Um, and then probably the last month, and a half I think it's now moved to a bit more anxiety in terms of yes we're really excited to be opening again it's nice to be up and running just not quite sure what we're opening up to yet and how long this is going to go on for um, so th those are our concerns now and it's with regards to forecasting I guess for a lot of businesses out there a lot of it is a crystal ball you know? yes you know, yeah. a lot of it, you know, we're just hoping for the, planning for the worst and hoping for the best. So, um, you know, that's, that's, that's the way it is at the moment. But through all of it, I've tried to keep a very positive attitude to all of it. Essentially, we're all in it, essentially. I know it sounds a bit cheesy, but, you know, it is a case of we're all in it together. We've just got to get on with it and make the most of it. Luckily, we were in quite a strong position coming into this. Um, we hadn't done any deals for a while. We'd been very efficient in the business. So we had kind of, we had kind of a really good buffer. Mm. And so that's put us in, in, a, in, a, in a reasonably good position. But like I said, you know, it depends what the six months are like, next six months are like. So the, so the opening up begins this weekend. Yeah. What, what can we expect to see when we come into a San Carlo restaurant? Um, obviously, things are going to look a bit different for a while. Um, we've had to invest heavily um, into PPE, into, so you, you're probably going to see um, waiters with masks. Um, you are going to see screens. So where we can't achieve the social distancing measures, then we'll have a screen in between those tables. So we took a view on it because at one point we had that many screens that was going to look like a perspex maze. So we've actually sacrificed a bit of capacity to, for the sake of making sure that it still looks like a normal restaurant. The key for all of this is we still want, a custom, we want the customers to come in and feel safe. Um, 
but we also want to make sure that they're still going to get that atmosphere and that buzz. And that's what we've all been missing about restaurants. Mm. Um, I think sometimes it's not necessarily just about the food. It's about, it's about that whole atmosphere and that buzz and, and being around people again. So we want to ensure that we've got that. Um, but yeah, you're going to see tables won't be set up when you walk into restaurants. So we will lay the table once you're sat down. Um, we'll bring glassware over once you've ordered your drinks. Um, our teams will be sanitizing um, after clearing every table, after touching other tables. So yeah, there's all this we've got to take into consideration. And hey, we're not going to get it right all the time. And there are probably mistakes made. But the key is what we decided was as a group, we are known for our quality. And we said, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it properly with regards to coronavirus guidelines. So we're going to go and, and go further even than what we need to do just to make sure everybody feels uh, safe. Well, of course, health, health, safety and hygiene is literally meat and drink to the restaurant industry, isn't it? Yeah. You know, essentially we're good at it. There's been a lot of lobbying and stuff for ages. You know, we were saying get us open earlier. Um, governments obviously they've got their reasons for doing it now um but as an industry we're very good at that anyway we're very good at it. every day we have to work within very strict hygiene guidelines so um yeah no it's uh, it's going to be interesting um and we just we've started the training uh, with all the teams so today they've all been in for their first training sessions getting ready for saturday and is it going to be a, a full menu or a or a limited menu. So we're going to have we're going to have slightly reduced, um, but with San Carlo menu it doesn't really matter anyway. It's that big <laughs> normally. Yeah. So we've got a slightly reduced menu. We've taken off some items, but what we have said on the menu, if we've got the ingredients and you can't see something on there which you normally have, just let us know and we'll happily make it for you. All we're trying to do is just make sure we we're, we're just trying to keep a control of costs for the time being. Thing is with restaurants, very high overheads. Um, you know, it's labor intensive as well. Obviously the part-time furlough really helps with that. Um, but uh, yeah, the overheads are big. So the moment we open those doors, there's a lot of money being spent and we need to make sure there's a good control in it. And just by shrinking the menu slightly, not just uh, even McDonald's did it, didn't they? Yeah, they um, did. I think it just allows us that stepping stone to try and get back to some normality. As long as you have the Ville Milanese. <laughs> that's my favorite when we opened for delivery that was the first thing i ordered was it <laughs> yeah yeah me too uh, except I, I ordered chicken the first time by mistake but that's another oh. another story um so how would you hope that the unlock proceeds from here i mean obviously there is hope isn't there that they will relax the guidelines further uh, obviously you're in mm -hmm. government hands on that but do you think they've gone far enough? Sorry, you mean, do they think they've gone in, far in, enough? In terms of the relaxation of the guidelines. Could they have gone further at this point, do you think? I don't know. You know, I'm, I, look, my game is restaurants. We have to, I guess, we have to hope that the government is taking the right advice from the right people and they've got a reason for doing this. I don't think... You know, I'm not going to be one of the keyboard warriors sat here and saying that it shouldn't have been done now or it should be done. I'm not qualified to answer that. At the Fair end enough. of the day, um, we will do what the government tells us to do in terms of um, in terms of moving forward. I think it all depends on obviously infection rates and stuff and how it changes. We've seen in other countries where rates have increased again. So I think we just have to go with it. I think. The issue for us at the moment, I think, is still to get people confident to come back out. That's their choice. Um, confidence is still going to play a big part. Yes, this weekend will be a very busy weekend. I think it's going to uh, it's American Independence Day, isn't it? But you know, yeah. people are going to be out in force. It's going to be a very busy uh, weekend, though I don't think that will be a fair reflection of what's going to happen over the next couple of months. The key for us is getting offices and other people coming back into the city centres. Yeah, that's that, really interesting. That's isn't great, it? great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of talk at the moment about uh, city ecosystems whereby uh, all businesses depend on other businesses. And um, I think the commentator, the political commentator, James Forsyth, said yesterday that until you have thriving city centres, you're depriving the economy of one of its biggest engines. Do, do you agree with that? 
hugely. You know, I think there's been a lot of talk during this, um, a lot of viewpoints through this whole um, lockdown about how much life has changed, you know, forever. There's going to be massive changes now. I think, I think it depends what your idea of massive changes and, and over what kind of time span um, is classified as a massive change. Look, we're always changing anyway. There's incremental changes. We've seen city centres changing over the last um, 10 years anyway. We've seen the demise of generally of a lot of retail. And so city centres, city centres which we're already morphing into will be is a, is a centre for food, drink, music, entertainment, conferences. Um, that's what a city centre is about. In terms of the old days where everyone comes into town shopping, not so much. I think retailers, their stores will have to become more of experienced stores going down that kind of Apple model. Um, you still order online, but you've got to, you can experience the brand. Um, but I do think the kind of traditional shops, it's, it's on a certain timeline, I think. Um, mm. And the major thing, which is, is hugely apparent now, and you never realise how important it is. Look, for us as restaurants, why have we opened in city centres rather than outside of city centres in general? Because we've got bigger trade all times of the week. So you've got business people in during the week for lunch times. You've got events going on in the evening, attracting more trade. You've got the residents here. You know, that, there's a reason why we open in city centres and we pay higher rents because it's a greater footfall. If we start losing offices and retail, then what is a city centre? Mm. Yeah. You know, I, so I think that they've all got a place. Yes, we've got to have that ecosystem, but key, I think, moving forward over these next few months, if offices, and don't get me wrong, if, it's, if we're being told it's safer not to have the offices working or people working in offices, then so be it. That's fine. That's not my decision to make. Everything should be done if it's safe to do so. Though I'm not qualified to answer when it should happen. However, without offices being in the city centre and without the workers coming in city centre to offices, how can, everyone, how can the sandwich shops thrive? The after works, drinks places, lunchtime. Um, there's also the retailers do a lot of trade out of people get on their lunch breaks. So, you know, a lot of businesses rely on this. Um, and, and I think a lot of people actually enjoy, you know, I think one thing I've realized coming out of this is, yes, sometimes it's quite nice working from home. You know, I'm to do the commute in the morning. But there's definitely something to be said of that missing of that interaction between people and definitely you know, that that's the one of the things. The talk. Yeah, I mean, from the from the other side of the penny, the office side of the penny, um, one of the biggest challenges facing offices is to get people back into uh, the office environment because that's how you hold on to your culture and your magic ingredients. Yeah. That's how you bring on your 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 young people, how they learn uh, much harder when they're all. At remote locations yeah no i agree but, yeah uh, everybody depends on think, everybody i think that the sooner we can get the offices back into the sensors then the sooner a lot of the other businesses will start to thrive again but until that happens i think trade is going to be difficult yeah um, and obviously not so much in manchester though actually no sorry no i'm wrong like obviously we would normally do well in from august onwards with football and you know all, all the matches starting the concerts so there's all that which has gone as well all the conferences mm. all the events all that stopped this year so literally most of our normal channels of trade um are getting switched off so it, it's, it's not going to be easy the next six months and um and that's why we also need landlords to work with us um you know that's that's mm -hmm. been one of the major issues yeah I uh, so back to the reopening on the Super Saturday, I think you've called it, or uh, Independence Day, July 4th. Um, so, you know, in terms of uh, confidence, consumer confidence, so th there was a survey published today, I think, by CGA, which said they're expecting 19% of consumers, that's, believe it or not, 9.5 million people to be yeah. out this weekend. Uh, I'm sure you'll get your fair share of that. Um, but is, is that what you're anticipating? A bump oh yeah, we are. And then... um, we're pretty much fully booked already across most of our sites. Um, Saturday and Sunday looks like it's going to be, you know, really, really busy. Um, we're airing on the side of caution, so we're probably underbooking them slightly, um, just because we want to make sure we get it. We're going to make sure we get it right. We want to be responsible. We want want to make sure it's a safe environment for everybody. 
Um, but yeah, no, look, we're really excited. For all the chat I've talked about the doom and gloom, look, we're excited. It's great to be back open. And it's nice seeing the teams are all excited and happy and um, looking forward to getting back into it. Um, yeah. But yeah, this weekend's going to be a, uh, a big... It's going to be interesting to see what happens this weekend. The atmosphere should be great, I would have, think, I would have thought. I think so, yeah. I, I definitely think so. I think... Um, it's surprising, actually. I've spoke to some people who said, actually, we're going to leave it this weekend. It'll be too crazy. We're going to come out next weekend instead. <laughs> After being in for 14 weeks. But the, actually, the funniest <laughs> was they've said to me today, they said, we've got a lot of twos booked. A lot of couples. And I said, Really? So that's the last thing I'd want after all of uh, this. I'd be out with my mates. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, let's have the final unashamed plug. So which, which restaurants are going to be open this weekend? Uh, in Manchester. Yeah. Uh, so San Carlo in Manchester, Cicchetti, uh, Bottega in Selfridges, um, the Grand Cafe downstairs in Selfridges, um, the Champagne Bar over in Trafford, Selfridges, and... Um, Hale, the airport. Great. And in the other cities, uh, a selection of the restaurants, I assume. Correct, yeah. Great. Well, Marcello, thank you for sharing. It's really interesting. I wish you a fantastic weekend, but more importantly, a quick rebound. Um, it, it's, uh, it's one of my favourite places, and uh, I, I wish it uh, uh, only good things. Thank you, Robert. All right, speak again. Bye-bye.